Well, it's another day as a microgreens, hobbyist, farmer, whatever you want to call it. But I promised some of you guys I'd show you some updates on uh, some of those new seeds that I just got in. And I'm about to do that now. I'm going to un unstack some of them. I haven't looked at all of them, so I'm not sure that they're all ready. But I'll show you what I, what I know, okay? Uh, one thing I mentioned uh, that I wanted to order some hydrogen peroxide, food grade, 35%. And let's see, where did I put it? And I did that. And so I mixed this up with uh, some water to get it down to about 3%. My mix is probably 3 to 5% hydrogen peroxide and uh, I use that in a spray bottle and I wash down my trays with it instead of using bleach and I also sprayed some of my sunflower and that was already uh, up and growing and under the light and I also sprayed some sunflower that had been planted for about two or three days and I have two trays one I sprayed one I didn't I'm just gonna see if there's any difference at all and how that came out. Um, probably gonna spray them again after I uncover them right now. So the way that you you mix this up though is uh, I followed the directions that it came with and I think it was that uh, it's 11 to 1. So if you use one ounce of this and a, to 11 ounces of water you get 3%. And I kinda put like, I don't know, it was two ounces to 25 ounces, I didn't really get too concerned about whether my ratio was exact or not, but it worked pretty good. So now that's out of the way, let's get some trays unstacked. I already dropped down these these trays here. Uh, I'm gonna wanna run them over my, my trusty broom tray to get any dirt and seed hauls off the bottom. Show you this top tray. Like I've told you many times, I use amaranth for my top tray as a weight because I don't, I don't stack it. So this amaranth, that's gonna stay covered up for another day. So I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna clean off the seed holes at the bottom on my broom. I'm gonna put the lid back on and I'm gonna put them on the top shelf where it's not all that bright and they'll stay there for another day so they can get nice and tall before I put them underneath the lights. So let's clean this up. Gets off at least a lot of the a lot of the holes. It doesn't get them all off, but and this this is a clear lid. So there is some light that gets in there, but I really like these these uh Fish trays is what the the people that gave them to me called them, and they work great. And I actually really like that you can you can seal them up completely if you want. And I, I partially seal mine, and it, it keeps the seeds from drying out, keeps them nice and moist. And that just works great. So experiment time. These are those Detroit Dark Red beets. And you can see most of them have sprouted. These were planted dry. I didn't soak. I never soak. And um, I covered them with about a quarter inch of vermiculite. And so this experiment is I did some with vermiculite and I covered some with my, my soil that I showed you that I made, which is mostly cocoa core and a little bit of uh, pot and soil. So uh, these are ready to go under the light. They probably could have been stacked from the day, but I'm just gonna put them under there right now. So these are the ones that I covered up with soil. Same thing, Detroit Red or Detroit Dark Red or whatever they are, beets. Uh, less expensive seed than Bull's Blood. I know they're not going to be as nice as Bull's Blood, but I wanted to try them. And so I had like a pound of this seed. And so you can see though, 
I don't know if you can tell, but some of them broke through really nice, and other ones, there's still like a cap of soil sitting on the top. And what I've had happen in the past is if that cap of soil stays like tight and becomes uh, a shelf, it can harm the seedlings as they come up. But we're going to see what happens. I'm going to leave this overnight, um, and then I will water it probably he pretty heavily tomorrow, and maybe that soil will break up. But that's one of the reasons why I've been using vermiculite, because it, it doesn't have that problem. So, let's clean that up a little. There's not a lot under there. Throw that under the lights. Now for some sunflower. These sunflower, I had already grown, I had already uh, sprayed these with the hydrogen peroxide about three days after they had germinated. And I can still see, I've still got some, some seeds that are a little bit moldy. Um, for the most part, it's really not that bad. That's kind of what sunflower typically looks like. And I'm going to spray those again in just a second with the hydrogen peroxide mix. And here's a tray I did not spray. And I actually think the one that I sprayed, it looks marginally better. It's not significant, but a little bit. Uh, if you can easily take out seeds that you know did not do very well, go ahead and you know take those out. So I, I try to do that if I can. Seeds that did not germinate, you'll those are the ones that typically will get moldy. So under the light with these, I'm gonna grab my spray bottle that's got some hydrogen peroxide already mixed in it. This is the one that's about it's about three percent, three to five percent. I wanted to go, if anything more on the high side than the low side and it seems okay we'll see so I'm gonna spray that on there pretty liberally my bottle's getting a little bit low so it's kind of hard to spray them out but that should help sanitize it and also kill off any mold growth you have going on you can do this with with like everything, not just sunflower. And what I kind of like about it, might sound kind of weird, but you know how uh, if you ever had a cut and you put hydrogen peroxide on it because you're sterilizing it and it kind of foams up and that foaming up kind of gives you like the reassurance that it must be killing off anything bad and that's a good thing. Well, you'll see that on your sunflower seeds that... Uh, have any mold growth on them or any sort of bacteria at all, you'll see that those will foam up the same way and that gives you that same good feeling that, hey, it must be doing a good job, must be working. Kind of silly, I know, but hey, it, I, I like seeing that. It makes me feel good. I really need to mix up another batch, so I'm having a hard time holding this. So I'll, I'll mix up another batch and probably spray those again tomorrow. Uh, for one thing about hydrogen peroxide that I have seen on the internet, I don't know if it's true, but I assume it probably is, is that if you've got like a clear bottle, you want to keep it in the dark. That the sunlight or light will turn your H2O2 into H2O, which is water. Um, I've been keeping it kind of in the, in the dark. I want to get either... A, a light shielded bottle or I'm gonna wrap this one in panda plastic or paint it black or something just to be sure like I said I don't really know that that's necessarily true but I'm gonna go with it all right so what else we got here here is a big heavy stack of trays And I can see some some things poking out the edge, which tells me they are ready. On the top here, once again, I have amaranth. And 
and it is not ready. That still needs about two days. <coughs> Excuse me. What I am going to do is I'm going to water it. Uh, let me turn my hose on. I'm going to put it on the flower setting, which is a light spray. I've noticed when amaranth is germinating, you need to keep it nice and moist. If you don't, you'll get uneven germination. Once it's germinated and the roots are in the soil, you want to water it, you know, a lot less. Um, I, un I only underwater the amaranth, and I try to keep the top of the soil semi-dry. Um, it's not possible to keep it totally dry and, and still water thoroughly, but you want the top to dry out daily. It, that helps keep mold down and it helps keep down uh, dampen off problems, which everybody who's grown amaranth has had dampen off problems. I don't have that as much. So, we turn this to, uh, to flour. My next tray down here is also not yet ready, which looks like might be broccoli. It's pretty close to ready. But once again, I had poor germination on that tray. I think I'm gonna have to move the way I have my trays because the trays, they're up on this top shelf and they're up against a wall. I have a fan behind me that's blowing all day. And it seems like the the end that's up against the wall, somehow that fan, the air is coming back and it's drying out the tops of the trays. So I'll show you what that looks like. See that uneven germination? This side here was up against the wall. I just sprayed it down. The tray underneath, similar thing. Uh, that one though I'm going to unstack right now. So this one, I'm just going to clean off the bottom of it. So this one, I will be restacking. I'm going to set it over here for now. Put the amaranth right on top of it, which was already on top of it. So this one looks like it's probably, there's a good chance that this is that uh, that red garnet mustard that I was trying out. Uneven germination again, but this one I'm going to go ahead and put right under the lights. But I'm going to, once again, mist it first. I really should fix, I, I have to fix something about that because I can't have half my trays not germinating really well like that. This is also my first try with the, uh, the mostly cocoa core mix that I made up. Seems okay. Um, I might need to start watering maybe every other day while it's stacked, which I wasn't doing that before, but I am seeing a little bit the germination's maybe not quite as good. Maybe the maybe the way that the cocoa core holds the water, it's not allowing it to keep the seed wet as much as it is what I'm used to. So here looks like uh, another mustard. Not sure exactly. I don't really worry about labeling my trays as the sprouts get a little bit bigger. They're really easy to identify what they are. I don't worry about all that labeling everything and all that. I've never had a microgreen get you know full grown and, and not known what it was. For me, it's easy. I, I've grown them many times. I know what it is. If you're just starting out, and when I just started out, I was labeling everything. It might be a good idea for you to do that so you know what you're growing. This is 
I've been told this is a really slow sprouter, and it is. This is that purple auric. I hope I'm saying that right. A couple of them, you probably can't tell, a couple of them have sprouted. And they are like a nice deep red. But most of them have not really germinated yet. And so what I'm going to do with this is I am going to mist it. And I'm going to stack this other tray right back on top of it. One other thing about this though that I'm noticing, I hope I'm not boring you guys too much, but is that a lot of what came in that packet of seed might not be seed. There was some uh, bigger pieces that are clearly seed and then there was a whole lot of like little black pieces that they don't appear to be seed. I don't know what they are, but they were in the seed mix. And I don't know, we'll see. So that's going to get restacked. This one I want to mist. I might have already, but I don't think so. And that one I'm not going to stack again. I'll leave that one open. And I'll put them stacked right up and I'll, I'll leave this one under the light. Alright, so that's good. The uh, amaranth is going to go back up top. Just missed in the, missed in the uh, tray here to make sure I have enough moisture in there. Put that one back up here. I'll stay there for another probably uh, two or three days. Then I've got over here some, uh, these these probably aren't ready. There's some radish in here that I planted a couple days ago. And also amaranth, which I usually top off my trays with. And I'll give that a nice little spray right now. Oh yeah, I can see the, the radish is coming up nicely. Perfect time to uncover it, uh, to water it, but it's going to get stacked again. This is Rambo radish. And the tray below it looks exactly the same, which is also Rambo radish. And the reason that that's perfect to uncover it right now is that needed some water. And I'm, gonna, I'm getting it just in time. Water those in really good. Sorry if I'm off the camera. All right. Stack those back up. Put the amaranth back on top. Missed my cover tray. And I'll put that right back on my top shelf. Well, that's about it for today. Uh, I hope you 
found some of that interest and I know I promised I'd give you updates on some of the new seeds that I got and I wanted to show you the beets experiment with the vermiculite versus soil. I also want to talk about the hydrogen peroxide that I got. Um, yeah, I just want to keep you guys in the loop and I'll, I'll keep you updated as those seeds grow so you can see what's going on with them. And it's been a long day. I just came in from the garage uh, working on that the other project some of you guys have seen come up in my video feed which is that charger I'm working on but I know a lot of you probably are not interested in that so if you see that stuff come up and you're only here for microgreens you know that's fine you don't have to watch my uh, my garage projects or whatever but I appreciate you guys sticking around I appreciate everybody that subscribes and I'm happy to show you everything that I know or think that I know and yeah, keep watching. I'll keep making the videos. Thanks for being around, guys. Talk to you later.